What's up? What's up? What's up? What's what's going on, man? What's going on? Welcome everybody to the Big Hammer Show. I'm your host, Mr. Daytona, AK413, with my co-host Jimmy Swagger, AK Straw Balls, AK2217, the man with the million handles. But we're gonna stick with Jimmy Swagger today. What's going on, brother? Man, you got you left the best handle out. When I was rolling in 2018, man, right before I had went off the air. I had the best damn handle. I had the white man on the sand pile that caused all kind of havoc and shit. So, hey, man, good to be here. Good to see everybody up in here. Sorry about the little uh, inconvenience. I got arrested down uh, on the way here coming to the damn studio. But they let me off because I had a damn I, I, I had I had crack Carter with me, you see. And crack talked his way out of the bullshit, you know, crack, crack got to talking to the police officers. And we got this, we, we, we got everything straightened out. There was 10 of them. There was 10 of them and crack had them all just juggling and rolling with them. So I didn't get, a, I didn't get, I didn't go to jail, but I did, I did get arrested. They gave me a little citation to, to go downtown with. But other than that, uh, a, a, a 413, what kind of day have you had? Cause it's been hectic on my end. Well, I had to go to the bank and get bail money for you. But uh, other than that, I was just chilling at the house, you know, getting ready for the show, listening to some scat, uh, some skip. Some good skip roll today, you know, 27.025. I heard some good fights, some good Q souls and whatnot. But uh my yeah, that was my that was my highlight. Getting you bail money. <laughs> get, get the bail money, get the bail money. Well, uh we got Crack Carter. Crack Carter's here. And uh, you know, right now he's backstage, he's drinking some Johnny Walker black. And you know, uh last I checked on him, the they were getting him, they were getting him suited up and zooted up. And they had to take his damn guns off of him. I don't know why he brought guns down. <laughs> I, I, I told Crack, I said, Crack, this ain't going to be that kind of meeting. This ain't yeah, going to yeah. be that kind of greeting. Man, you don't need to bring all that all that <laughs> heat with you. We just go talk and we just go kick it. And, you know, we just go sit around and, 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 and see how everything goes on that end. For sure, for sure, man. Well, everybody that's joining in, welcome to the show, man. It's the first uh, ever show. Yesterday we did like a pre-warm-up. Um, this is the first show, uh, first edition of the Big Hammer Show. Uh, we welcome you guys. Uh, comment, uh, and we'll see if we get to you guys later on and stuff. But uh, we're just gonna get right into it, man. You know, uh, I started out on twenty seven point zero two five, like back in nineteen ninety eight. Loved the CB hobby. Um, just been, you know, up to presently, I've been uh, 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 a mud duck pretty much, you know. But I love the, I love the hobby. I love learning about. You know antennas and 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 radios and whatnot. What about you, man? What about you, Stevie? What, what I mean, uh, uh, Jimmy? What about you, hey, brother? Well, you know, listen, I'm not going to get into all that because I'm currently not on the air and I'm talking. Man, my phone has been blowing up so much about this podcast, and you know, I've just told everybody. I said, man, I said, you know, we're going to run with this thing and we're just going to do it until you know whatever it turns out to be. Everybody has called and they've blown me up and. They like, man, do you really have crack coming in? I said, man, we really got crack coming in. Crack, you know, he's finally backstage. But like you did last night, I want to give a shout out to all the guys that's hanging over there on the sideline. You know, the viewers. Uh, I see uh, Fat Man's back up in here. Tony Johnson's up in here with us. Kyle Buford, uh, all them guys is back up in here with us. Chris Fuelmore, all them, all them guys. Uh, new kid, he's up in here. Machete's back up in here. Triple two up there. He's in here tonight. So, you know, I just want to give a little shout big out to them guys. And, and big I, I'm super here. happy that they're here, you know. So just stay tuned. Stick around. Uh, this is new. You know, we're not professionals. This is for entertainment purposes only. So we're just going to roll with it. And uh, we'll get the star guest out here. And we'll get this thing kicked off and get it rolling. For sure. For sure. Like like you said, shout out to everybody that just joined us. We got a little bit. I'm a little jittery. This is the first, you know, the first show. We're just breaking it in. So. Just bear with us right now. I'm going to uh, start getting uh, cracking in. So, you know, what else you want to talk about before we get crack up in here? Well, you know, I mean, listen, there's so many bases that we could cover. You know, I'm just anxious. I'm, I'm ready to get right into this. I want to I want to peel the skin back on this and I want to get crack out here. And I just want to get the people what the people want. And, uh, you know, just get this party started and and get this thing jumped off because everybody knows cracks long winded. You know what I mean? So I don't want to waste a whole lot of time because this is a this is a short stay. So we got a lot of ground to cover in a short amount of time. So I just want to jump straight to it and uh, get this thing popped off and let it rock and roll. 
Speaking so of everybody, pop- welcome, crack. Well, welcome, of welcome off. to legend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy bigger with his damn sign. You see this? Yeah. So, so you said I want everybody to know y'all are safe. Don't worry. The the, the head honcho is here. Don't worry about it. Let's go, hey, Jamie. Hey. Well, crack. Hey, good evening to you, crack man. Listen, crack. I knew you was gonna come with some shiggity with the to the band. <laughs> right off first the of all, you know, right off the damn bat, that's crack. <laughs> yeah, this this is crack. The crack is back. You know, I pushed this guy. I pushed him in pal talk to come back, to come back, to come back, and this guy finally come back because there was for a minute, Vinny, uh, that I didn't think this guy was gonna get back, and I was really, I was kind of like devastated about it because when he was down there in Longview in Texas, I had heard so much. You know, way back when, when 4040 was out there and he was doing the gates and stuff coming off the west side, I'd heard so many gates of of, of crack, you know, Clarence. And, and man, I just, I wanted to be able to hear him for myself, you know. And I did. I put a lot of pressure on him and I got him back. And, man, it is just an honor to have him on this podcast and get him in here with us. And I just want to start the, the evening off with some, you know, just some conversation. Uh, let him get a chance to say hello to everybody in the room. Crack, you got a lot of viewers hanging over there on the side. A lot of people uh, knew you was coming, uh, and they was expecting you, and and, and it, we, we should have a great turnout here, man. So, uh, again, congratulations for getting in here with us and taking the time out of your day and to joining us. And, and like I say, I just want to really thank you for it. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jimmy. Glad to be here. Glad to be in the house with all the Super Bowl stars hanging out. And I hope we have a good time tonight. But it's right. going to be up to Jimmy to ask the right question. If he asks me the wrong question, guess what? If you roll a nasty five, I will roll it. Don't <laughs> worry about it, guys. I yeah, got yeah. this. I got a yeah. great big hammer, Mr. Clarence right. Scott, to get down. <laughs> well, Crack, I'm going to start it like this. I'm going to start it like this, you know. You also, we got United Kingdom up in the house, too, and that's what I'm really, really super stoked about. The guys all over from the United Kingdom, they're a part of this, and they're 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 in here with us tonight as well. And they have heard of you, man. So I mean, you you're not only just talking in the states, man. You you are talking everywhere. And you know, people can say what they want to say, but the truth is the truth. And I mean, man, you are doing nothing but to just you're 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 a havoc on twenty seven two five. You know what I mean? And that's why you are here, crack, because you are the havoc, and the crack is back. But the main thing is, is you're you you're on everybody's video gates, man. You can you can we can trifle through JD's Watergate page, and I mean, man, whether it's five seconds of you, or it's five minutes or fifty minutes, it doesn't make no never mind, man. You are a havoc on the bowl. You are something to be reckoned with, and not not only that, but you bring a really really quality talk show when you come. Now you've got people that really don't like your talk show, or shall I say, agree with your talk show, but you bring a talk show. You're not one of the guys that just sit out there and say one, 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 worldwide, worldwide. I got the hammer down. You bring <laughs> you bring a QSO when you come to the band. You bring a talk show. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But you do got a lot of people that's in here and they're joining and they're viewing this thing tonight. And uh, they're from everywhere, correct? They're just not here from the United States, therefore. Okay. Well, I welcome everybody to the house that Jimmy – and 413 built. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so let's get on with it, Jimmy. Ask me anything you want. And if Machete asks me something crazy, I tell y'all what y'all do. Bleep his ass. <laughs> and that damn prime minister guy ask y'all something. Don't pay him any attention. He'll kick me in the ass as soon as I come out there tomorrow and talk plenty of woo-woo shit. <laughs> they tell you even time. Danny, Red, Red, Reverend Ike, and all the rest of y'all. I'm seeing a, a oh, oh shit. I'm a crack Anthony Ray is a crack Carter fan. Who the hell is Anthony Ray? I don't know <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, well, crack, check this out. So uh, I'm going to apologize, first of all, and I'm going to apologize for me and you, crack, because when me and you get going here and we get rolling here, I'm not going to pay too much attention to the comments because I'm going to try to stay. I'm going to try to stay in with you and 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 try to get through this because we're only we're only limited a certain amount of time uh, with the producer and, and stuff like that on the stream. And we're actually streaming it into this room where a lot of these guys are viewing it right now. So, you know, most everybody in this room, they all know who you are. I mean, you're just you're you're a legend to twenty seven point zero two five. So, you know, first of all, I want to just I want to dig in deep and I want to know the man behind the microphone. Everybody knows the guy 
that is on the microphone. But when you see it like we're seeing it right now, I want to know who the man behind the microphone is. So take just a few minutes of your time and uh, in your own words, in your own way, tell us and tell the viewers, who is Crack Carter? What is Crack Carter? Crack Cod is nothing but uh, just another sea beer that's always wanted to get on the bowl so I can talk trash. I've always wanted to do that. Another thing is that I all, I never did feel like I should try to control the band, but I didn't want nobody to control me. I always say it, this, guys. Never build a radio station to whoop no one person. Build a radio station so they don't whoop you. Because, hell, it ain't no fun. It is no fun. They can get the hammer dropped on you. And the Jimmy, so I started out years and years ago, they're going to be building this reputation. It takes a while to do it. You're not going to do it over, overnight. I started out at the, the Super Bowl, not the Super Bowl cleanup, but I started out as uh, Mr. Clarence C. Carter Jr. And then I moved up, Jimmy. I moved up to Johnny Mac Brown because he had two co-fade Magnum Fofos. <laughs> And a long white robe and black tennis shoes. That's when I was stepping out of Texas. I live now in the Evergreen. I moved up here to try to start a life over. A life of what? A life of freedom and a life that, I mean, that I always wanted. But when I got up here in Maryville, Washington, I had a problem. I had a problem, Jimmy. They didn't want me to talk local. And I said, why y'all don't want me to talk local? They said, we do not understand your language. So... Mm -hmm. The language on the Super Bowl is a whole lot different than regular bullshit, if y'all know what I mean. I don't, I don't talk their language. I ain't got time to ask you what time your breakfast is or, how, or what kind of breakfast you had or, or how you feel about the day of tomorrow. Because most of the time, people just don't give a damn no way. So I just like to talk skip. I love to talk skip, and that's the reason why I'm here tonight. And I hope everybody out there that hear me on the radio understand it. And I hope y'all having the same damn fun with it. If you're not having fun on a damn radio, get rid of the damn thing. That's what I said. If you are not, if you ain't got a great big hammer, don't worry about it. Find somebody to buy one of the damn thing. It's real simple. Right. Now, Jimmy, I'm going to let that part go, and I'm going to get back on your show. Now, what the hell else you want to ask me? to Okay. <laughs> How how long have you been? How long have you been talking on the Super Bowl? Well, goddamn! Now you're from the exam, old motherfucker. See, <laughs> that's what the problem is. See, look here. Now, I'm I'm 77 years old, guys, and I'm a lesbian. Okay, since I'm a lesbian, that got me shook. It took me a while to get out of here on the Super Bowl because I found out that Oprah Winfrey said anybody who loved women. It's a lesbian. I said, God damn, that's me. So so I go out to the bowl and I became a lesbian. So, Jimmy, I've been on the bowl since 1972. In, and I, 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 I hate you ask that damn question because I'm going to go to you. I'm going to go with it like this. In 1972, we was talking on Channel 2. There was no place nobody could talk in Longview, Texas. It was a guy out of... Um, is a guy named, uh, what was that guy named? Shit, I'm going to think of it in a minute. It's, uh, shit, what, uh, I got it running somewhere. Oh, yeah, his name was Flagship. You, you got it wrote down over there? Yeah, I got his name. His name was Nate Wood. Flagship started going around the United States trying to get everybody to go to Channel 6. I didn't know what the hell the difference was. I went down to Channel 6, Jimmy. And they did not want me to talk on Channel 6. No, get your black ass back up on the Channel 2. That's the kind of shit I had to go over. I'm serious, mm -hmm. guys. So flagship got a group of guys and start setting up these Rooster Channel Jumpers uh, things all over the United States. And when he came close enough, I went and listened to him. He said, this is going to be our home, the Channel 6. It was not the Super Bowl then. The Super Bowl came later. So we had to go down there and take the bowl. If that's a bad word to use, I used it. But I had to go down. And so I had, in order to go down and take the bowl, you got to have a big ass amplifier. So you go out and buy a laser 500, which is a piece of shit. <laughs> and then, I'm serious. And but that was the shit the back then. Huh? But that was the shit back then, though. Yeah, the shit. I could co phase the damn shit, and then I could just talk my yeah. ass up. And now, damn it, I, I need an amplifier. 
So immediately, if not sooner, I could afford it. I went out and bought me a Maverick 250 amplifier. So now I'm the shits, right? Okay, I get on the damn Super Bowl and I said, the Super Stud, Unit 495. God damn, ball. I couldn't get nobody but women to call me. Because no man wants to talk to me. <laughs> Am I right? No man yeah. wants to talk to me. So anyway, I had to change my hand a little bit later on, Jimmy. So I've been on the bowl since 1972, on and off. But when the Super Bowl came in, I was there. And, and we had hell, y'all. We had hell uh, talking on it. Now, it is not exclusive to anybody. Believe it or not, it is inclusive. But it was start because the African-Americans wanted to make them have a home channel. Now, so now we got Jimmy Swigert and we got 413. Now they African American too. That used to be years ago. I don't know if it's any difference now than, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm beginning to believe that it is. That we were the brotherhood, a brotherhood of hammer droppers. That's what we was. Mm. And whenever we went to breaks, boy, we it was just like a brother or sister that we met. It didn't matter what color you was, or what it didn't. Because everybody there was cool with one another. Wasn't no fight, wasn't no bitching and moaning. But we did have a lot of water gates where somebody would, I hell, they bring 50, 60 of them going to hear, want me to hear what the so, hell. So when you say water gates, so when you say water gates, we got to change that to, to tape recorders, you, right? You ain't right. Cassette tapes. <laughs> eight tracks. Hey, hey, there wasn't no eight water tracks. gates. Let's just clarify that because in 20 years, yeah, yeah. In 20 years. everybody walk around with a damn cassette player on their damn arm. <laughs> right. Right. They want you so to I hear that shit. I, I didn't want to hear that, Jimmy. Huh? I had to say, I had to say, cassette players because you ain't lying. Yeah, you. because they're not going to know it as <laughs> in twenty years. I mean, the old gonna... bastards, Will. <laughs> the, the old bastards know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, right, <laughs> but, right, right, right. But, but that's the way this thing started. And then, but in in those days, man, I could drive anywhere. It didn't make any difference. Any town, if I keyed a radio up. And I had problems. I could call and somebody, be 20, 30 guys, come out there want to see what the hell you look like. Nowadays, the time, I don't know if that's true or not. But I have had a lot of experiences in CB radio, a lot of a lot of help, and a lot and like prime minister. I told, I tell you, I'm gonna tell you the story, and I gotta go. I gotta get, I gotta get back to you, Jim. I was out there one time. Bring, I gotta bring you on back, though, Craig. Huh? Hey, come on, tell your story. Tell your story. <laughs> I, I was at, I'm telling you, this is where this shit started, man. I was out there. I built me a damn beam. I'm going to be a smart motherfucker, see? So I go out there, see? I got all this education, right? So I go out and build me a 12-element, 60-foot-long beam. I was yeah. trying to get side rejection because I didn't want Black Diamond to plug my damn ears because I, I could whoop his ass any time I felt like because I run a big-ass shit back then. I run in 4 4 1000 which was 10,000 watts back then. But Jim, I built that damn thing. The wind come up. The wind came up, broke my damn beam in half, man. I come in the pal talk one night. I was crying. Boy, it was hurting my damn feet. I done did all this damn work, and the guy, and Jim, my goddamn beam broke. I tell Prime Minister sitting in the damn room. You know what he said? Good. Now, what kind of friend is that, man? <laughs> he said his shit broke, and goddamn it, now he your friend. Uh, but good. Check, but but check this out, Craig. So we gotta we gotta hold that part. So what I want to do is I want to back up. I want to back up a few years. I want to back up several years. I want you, I want you to tell me where did it originate from? For you to gain all this knowledge, for you to for you to have the knowledge that you have to be able to come present right now where we are right now, current, and tell us about these these beams that you've had and these boxes that you've ran and to no prime and all this. Back up 30, 40 years, back up 50 oh, years. Damn, where did the where where did the bowl originate from? That's what I want to get to the bottom. I want the to know where the bowl originated, originated from. from. The bowl originated from the concept of a guy named, like I told you, his name was Flagship. That's what it originated. The idea, the concept came that we should have a home channel. The bowl was uh, later named the bowl because that's where only the strong guys could survive. The only the strong would come up there. The weak mud ducks, they got there to go to the other channel. They couldn't survive on the bowl. So they call it the Super Bowl. That's the why they call it. And so we would get out there and I said we, uh, all of them would just get out there and just raise hell and have fun. Back then, the the, the 
it, it evolved into something a little bit different a little bit later on. And now they call it what? The mud duck bowl. It's a bunch of goddamn mud ducks that come out here, Jimmy. <laughs> okay, but hey, you know, and, and, we'll, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll get to that point too, but that right there steers me in to ask you this right here. So the, the bowl was founded by African Americans. Can you answer that and say yes yeah. or no? They was, uh, it was founded by African Americans for African Americans to have a home channel. Do you realize what I'm, when I say home, home is different from living in a house. Home is where you can go feel comfortable being around. That's where the home is. So that was our home channel was channel six. They said, if we want all of y'all to come down to channel six. So that's what we did. Now, I was never a member of the Rooster Channel, Jamba Jimmy. But I, I did believe in what, the, what, they, what they wanted to do for us. They wanted us to have a home so we could go and talk skip and talk shit and run our amplifiers and our antennas and do what we do. We had a language. That's different from anybody else. A lot of folks that come into this damn thing is not going to understand our language. So we can use our language. We can use our methods to our madness. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And so. So now when you say language, when you say language, like, are you talking like just a certain style of talk, like uh, uh, to, to put swagger? Would you say that's a good word to add swagger into the game of the lingo? Jimmy. Swagger and game is something that's not taught. Swagger and game is game is something you have you have to be born with it. If you're not born with that, it's hard to do. Now I, I put up with a lot of folks who said, come out there with a great big go by 40,000 watt, and they get out there and say, Full Roger, right on. I'm gone. I put up with it. But it's very, very difficult to teach swagger. I, I, you either got it or you don't. You just don't go around here just writing it on a damn book. And the last thing anybody ought to do is write down phrases or something they're going to use and then try to use it on a Super Bowl. It does not float. It does not work. It's the wrong damn boat and the wrong damn captain. <laughs> right, right, right. So let me let me, let me me ask you. So when you hear a bunch of guys out there and, you know, they're really not talking about nothing or they might think that they're talking about something. You know, say them guys, that you know, they have a different lingo. They have a different swagger on different channels. See, what you basically told me is when you came to six, it was set for you basically, you, you, it was just a certain lingo. You expected something out of it. You wanted, the bowl was going to have a certain, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Man, I just, I'm lost for the word because, you you when you come to like when I come to Channel Six and I talk on Six, I I was attracted to come to Six because of the game, because of the of the of the style of the talk, the competition, the 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 ambition of all the operators competitive. You know what I'm saying? Can you feel what I'm saying right there? Right. Is is do you see that? There's a, do you see that going on? Is that happening a lot right now, or would you say that it's it's kind of interchanging and, and going kind of all over the place. Uh, it's doing a lot of both and all of it, Jimmy. And the game is not only swagger. Uh, you know, you got to be able to call fights. And when I say fight, it, what is, it's kind of like drag racing. It, two guys line up, or three or four, and they get out there and they be fighting. What I mean is they, 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 they point their beams, hope they got a beam or a damn ground, but I don't give a shit what they're on. <laughs> They point that damn shit somewhere, and then they say, well, all right, let's go. The guy on the other end need to call a fight. That's game right there. They, if a guy don't have game, he can't call no damn fight. That's true. If you're a fighter, if you're a fighter, you, ain't, you probably ain't going to call no fights. So that means it, it getting screwed up like that. In certain areas of the country, there are certain guys will not call fights. Why? Because they are fighters. So what you do is you got to find somebody – that got the gift of gab, and I have named this guy. I, I, he don't fight that much. All Power is a perfect example of a guy who got get the gift of gab. They got they got people like Prime Minister. They got people like Sixty Three. They got guys that they got game. Switchblade. If I y'all don't mind me using their name, you got no. guys that they got got game. You got Young Keybird. All these new guys that came in here. And by the way, Juice. Yeah, Juice in, in California, he got game, but he didn't used to have game. What he did was he came and learned the game. 
He sat back and he listened to us talk, and then he started developing his own style. I can't, I can't go around it, Jimmy, and giving you a style. You can't copy mine. I can't copy yours, and I shouldn't. But everybody in the Super Bowl got a different style, and then if they do that, then the ball rolls, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't want to be like everybody else. The hell with do that you, bullshit. Do you think you know that's what? Do you think that's what's happened? Is like a young exactly. operator. So, so as a young operator coming into this game, we don't have very many. But the young operators that's coming into this game, what would you? What kind of advice would you give them? Would you give them advice like do less talking and a lot more listening? If you want to be 10 eight, you got to talk to 10 eight people. I mean, where's your where's your input on that? Is for a young man coming into this game with a lot of, with a lot of older, uh, more solitude of, 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 of operators. Jimmy, that's good advice for any professional, anything you do, any hobby. That's good advice. Learn, learn what you're doing first. In other words, learn the game. If I was to give a guy's advice, I'd say, Hey man, sit back and listen to what's actually going on in the boat. Learn it. Get with somebody who's doing it. Don't never ask nobody shit, Jimmy, that they never done it. If they, if they don't know how to do shit, don't ask them. Ask somebody who know how to do it and then go from there. But right. you, it, ain't, it ain't something you can teach. A person need to be willing to learn. You can be the best teacher in the world. But if you're not a good, if you're not a, don't, not willing to learn, you can never learn shit. And that's the way that way mm. it works. You got right. to be willing to learn the game in order to play the game. Absolutely. Right. So that drives me in. I'm curious, you know, because of where I've been and what I've seen and, and you know, what's been on, what's going on. I, you know, I, I've been in this since 2010, 2011. And, I, I, you know, I had the privilege to meeting you and hanging out with you at different occasions and different stops along my path of, of life in this hobby. But with all the animosity that the bowl is undergoing right now with all the, the stuff, the drama and all that, uh, as being current where you are and what you've been through in the past of seeing the bowl start, seeing the bowl established, seeing the people that has grew on the bowl, seeing the legends that has fallen. What, where's your mind? Where's your mindset on, uh, you know, just with the competition and all the animosity that's among us right now as, as one. Jimmy, how this animosity got started, it, 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 it's a, it, I am confused at how it got started. But here's an idea, here's a, what I believe happened. The animosity come when you go out and spend about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to have your radio station and it don't work. Somebody come out there with a damn two pill and whoop your ass. That, so you get pissed off because you don't spend your day um, paycheck and every damn thing and a lot of money on something that did not work. You got a lot of guys out here that's building radio stations for people that don't work either. They pay the guys and they don't do shit for them. You got guys who uh, animosity come when you uh, go out and buy, say, a 20000 and a damn thing blow up. An antenna that don't work, it burns up. That gummy, I mean, then you get a microphone that breaks, all kind of shit. Then your wife come and kick you in the ass because you done fucked up. Now <laughs> that's what that shit works, man. You get then your grandkids, you done sick, you done spent all that damn of money <laughs> and some damn bullshit. So so I say all the young guys, Jimmy, should learn from the old guys. They should learn and ask them how to get it done, and then let's do it. Right, right. In fact, I, I agree with you 100%. It's sort of like nowadays, like like back in the day, people would learn how to get on the ball, learn, start off with a two pill, learn, uh, you know, learn all the procedures and, and, and grow. It seems like nowadays, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, nowadays people just have money and just want to be the big man and throw money at their station without even knowing how to put anything together. You think that's a good assumption? Uh, pretty much. Uh, 413. The um, the guys who spending the money to, to buy these great big ass stations, those guys, they want to be the boss. No game, just want to be a boss. There's nothing wrong with them doing that. They are they're aspiring to be something great, right? The problem is 
it, it, that's where they stop. They stop being a two pill mud duck, and then they bring that bullshit to the damn bowl. Yeah, I'm getting tired of it. You, you got your mentality is you're gonna come out there and key with another mud duck. That ain't the way this is happening. What's happening? You keen with guys who have experience. These guys know what the hell they're doing, and then you done bought all this, you know, spent all this damn money. Now you done, you done messed up. If that's if they, so, no, I would tell these damn young guys to learn the game first, Jimmy, mm -hmm. and then be alone that. Okay, so, let me ask you. You got I, you, I backfed. I backfed four thirteen. What'd you say? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I'm disagreeing with Crack. I agree with. I agree uh, on that form of getting on. If you want to get on the Super Bowl. It's like you have, it's a learning process. You got to go right. through a pill, and, and you blow up a two pill. You learn how to fix it. You learn to you learn how to run with stuff, not just dump a whole bunch of money because you got money and think you're the boss. Because there's a lot of stuff that comes with the game. Right, right, right. You're not going to be a boss by wanting to be a boss. You're going to be a boss by what your peers think you are. A boss. Amen. I was about to say that. Now, if, if if you can have the biggest ham in the world, nobody hears what good is. I'm serious. So if you get out there and you point that damn thing uh, towards Australia or some damn way, but your damn condition somewhere in, you got a right. big ass hammer and don't know shit. Don't know nothing. Right. Don't know right. shit. Crack, would you, would, I mean, are you comfortable saying, have you heard this before? Like everybody wants to, they want to, they, they want to be the boss until it comes time to do ball shit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And en enlighten me, enlighten me on, in your opinion, crack. Enlighten, enlighten these guys, man. What's your opinion on that right there? I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Here, I heard a real good friend of mine say that one day, and I was, I, I was, um, I was knocked on the floor with the idea that he's right. A boss don't get out there and say, uh, "Jimmy Swagger." Uh, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Four, one, 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 one. I'm gone. They, they need balls. Shit. You know what a balls do? Let me tell you. Here what a balls do. Hit that damn foot pedals up. Hey, Jimmy Swag. All these children out here playing and out. <laughs> they need to go sit down and watch the old men dunk the basketball first. They're too small yet. Let them grow up a little bit. Then we're going to show them how to dunk the ball. That's the kind of shit. Now, when you do that, bam, the band go clear. What? That damn one, one, one guy with that shit, didn't he? <laughs> he? He gone. I've heard you. I've heard you state several times. And, I, you know, we're, in, we're, we're, we're open about this. I, I, I want to. I told everybody yesterday, you know, me and 413, I said, man, I want to. I want to hash problems out. I want to hash. I want to hash the the BS out. I want to open things up, pull the skin back on stuff, and take a deep inside of look and see what's going on. But I've heard you say several times that you feel like that there's certain certain things going on on the bowl, and and you know like certain people is trying to uh, show a certain dominance. And, 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 you know, not less, not, I don't think you can change the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is what it is, but just show a certain dominance. Do you feel like that there's certain guys out there that's trying to turn things or, or do things, whether it's looking for fame or they're just trying to flex their, their, their boxes with muscle power? What, what do you feel about that, correct? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, here y'all go. Close your damn ears. I was in and asked the wrong damn question to Clarence Cut. So close your damn ears. Yes, there are. Now, I'm not going to name any names because I'm supposed to be politically correct, right? Right? Politically correct. Yes, sir. I'm going to be politically Yes. But what, they're, what it seems to be, they're trying to change the culture into what they believe ought to be done. Change the way the swagger, the slang, and everything else into something else. I'm not going to sit here, Jimmy, and listen to you or no damn body else talk about uh, some shit like, hey, man, um, I got this 65-foot, uh, uh, 80-foot beam, and I'm going to whoop everybody ass with it. And um, the elements are, are one-inch elements. I'm not going to sit there and listen to this shit all day. So, but guess what? In the same thing, that's day radio. 
They can do any damn thing they want to. So I don't criticize that, Jimmy. I don't criticize it what people say on the bowl. I think a better approach to solving the problem is a problem. But the better approach is you get out there and talk about something that's fun for somebody else. And they're here. Eventually, they learn. They find out that nobody want to talk about their bullshit. They just want to hear your bullshit. And that's the basic thing, Jimmy. You cannot change what another person has in mind. The only person you can change, Jimmy, in 413 is yourself. If you can't control yourself, then you can't control others. So the worst thing you do is try to control a grown-ass man. That's not the way you do it. You get out there and you set an example like my father did or like your father did. Go out and do, have good work ethics. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do to build a hell of a di- hell of a radio station and talk like it, it's fun to you. If it's not fun, if it's not fun, get out of the damn business. Mm-hmm. If you right. can't take the damn gun pressure, leave it alone. That's exactly right. what the Super Bowl is all about. Because the Super Bowl is not for that gun and a weak minded bastard that done come on the bowl who's thinking they're running shit. Because they ain't no damn one man run nothing. That's right. 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 I totally agree with that. I really do. I mean, uh, do you do you feel like that there's people out there that just because they spend a ton of money that that's what they're trying to do? They're just trying to like say for say for instance, let's break this down. Do you think there's guys out there that have a big enough station that they feel like when they can key up, when they key up, when they get ready to key up, and they decide to key up, they can just talk anywhere they want to talk. They don't need Mother Nature. There's a bunch of them out there like that. One of the dumbest things I ever heard in my life. You ask me about my experience. I don't normally share this with other people because I don't want them to ask me a bunch of questions. So I'm going to share it. I'm going to share this with you right now, Jimmy, and I'm going to move back to what you're talking about. Over the years, I've, I learned how energy worked. I did. That was my profession. He was an electrical engineer. That's why I learned it. Being a black man, and that was tough to get in that profession. It's not only that, it was tough to get a job. But I went on, got one anyway, and moved up into the ranks. Now, to get back to your question, whatever it was, shit, I just had that on my mind. <laughs> you know. Again, what work were you, crack? Now work with me on this one. The the guys who spent all that damn money, and like I told you earlier, and did not get the expectation they wanted, guess what? They're not going to last long, guys. Don't worry about them. In about two or three years, they're gone. I guarantee you. Because they did not get the results that they wanted because they were too damn dumb, too damn stupid, and getting the wrong damn shit. And then call this up a Super Bowl stick up, they go run shit. And I'm gonna tell you again, none of y'all ever gonna be running the whole damn Super Bowl. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. But you can run your condition. What the hell you got a damn bean goddamn bean for? If you can't why the hell you get a bean? That is so you can move it around and have fun with that son of a bitch. So if you don't, just go get your damn ground plane shit. It's <laughs> over like hell, somebody hear your head. And just talk to be tough. But I think the most cut you I think you hit the nail on the head. The most dangerous combination is having the wisdom and the money. And learn, you know, the wisdom first and then the money to build a good station. Cause then you could if you read your radio right, man, all good things are happening. But if you're going out there with a with a eighty a hundred thousand watts and you're just throwing it in the air thinking you you dominating and not knowing the, your condition, you're gonna you're gonna get skull drug and then you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board because you ain't got that wisdom from before. Exactly. Yeah. That's the reason why the learning process is very, very slow. It's not fast, guys. Mm-hmm. You don't buy all this damn shit and then overnight you become the boss of the world. It doesn't work like that. A lot of guys think it does. That's the reason why they laugh at them. I think it's fun. Now, like I tell people all the time, you go out and buy a damn radio station to whoop somebody. That is the most messed up as shit I ever seen in my damn Preach. life. Jimmy. Preach it. You go out and buy them radio, all out of their watts. And then you go whoop somebody, forget something. You forgot to put a good antenna on the top of the damn house. If you got the biggest goddamn bomb in the world, 
and no delivery system. When you blow that bitch up, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna blow your ass up. You ain't blowing nobody <laughs> up. Your damn shit didn't go nowhere. So get your damn good ass missile so you can send that somebody where it's supposed to be. That may, if that make any damn sense. So Jimmy, <laughs> these crazy ass bastards keep on spending all this money. Let them do it. I found out something, guys, years and years ago. I, I said this. I made this statement. I think it's more like maybe, what, 20 years ago now? Maybe 15. To, anyway, it used to be, we did pal talk. I made this statement. I said, if I get me a good bean and 10,000 watts, they get me, ain't nobody going to be moving that shit every day. Mm -hmm. Do I get keen on? Hell yeah. Does it hurt? Hell no. You know why? Because when you whoop somebody or beat somebody on the bowl, guess what? You're going to get them tomorrow. Tomorrow is a better day for y'all ass. So go back and go back to your damn drawing board and, and, and do it right. Get your good antenna right. system and do your shit right. Right, right, right. So when you was down there in Long, when you when you was down there in Texas, I forget the last part of Longview. That. Longview. Okay. When you, when you was down there in Longview, uh, real quick, I'm like, how, how many years did you spend down there? Shit, man, hell, I, I was born down there. Okay. I've been up here in the Evergreen for about tw well, uh, about twelve years. I right, was born, right. and, but I didn't build this radio station I got now until about what about a year ago or two years ago, something like that. And I started out with a JB one fifty. So I okay. was in Longview all them years. I built my first big ass amplifier. I didn't have nobody to help me because there wasn't no damn help available. Wasn't right. what are you? So the, I learned. From from the teaching that I could learn in school, I learned how to build my own damn amplifier. Just and is that what you is that what you did down work. there? In, did you do that down there in Longview too? Exactly on my in my in my bed in my um in my dining room floor. I moved the table out and built that somebody and I I rebuilt it. It was already built, but it wouldn't work. It would not work on a bowl. There's a lot more to this shit. I had to, I didn't have the right tank call none of this shit. I hit the, hit the goddamn foot pillars, and all of a sudden, goddamn, the tube going to jump out of the socket. Now, <laughs> even four dash one thousand, guys. It wasn't up damn. It wasn't in one of these four dash, uh, what is three CX or twenty thousand like y'all running now. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have no damn two twenty thousand. But Jimmy, I, I built that damn shit, and I and I put it in line, and that got me work. I got lucky. So what? So what? I'm just—I ain't no smart son of a bitch, but but, but I'm a lucky bastard. <laughs> but, but let me, but let me, but let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So you come all there when you was in when you was down there in Texas, and you talked on Texas, and you talked in Texas for so many years, and all the stuff that everybody told me about you and what you have accomplished down there. How do you compare you down there and what you did? versus to where you are now and what you're doing and to what you will do in the future. Oh shit. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know what I did in Texas. Y'all know. I don't know. I was keying a damn foot pill. I don't know what I did. I don't even know what I'm gonna do in the future. What I'm doing now, I'm enjoying what I'm doing with less power and a damn good antenna system. I learned that it don't take all this damn power I run in Texas. What I was doing, I, I found out later, I didn't know then. I'm running like, I run 12,000 watts. If some bitch is swinging, the peak power is 38,000 watts. I didn't know I was plugging all these damn folk ears. You sure was. Y'all told me that when I get to, I didn't know it. I really didn't. And I uh, didn't really give a shit. Because that was my job in the first place. I didn't really give a damn some mud duck didn't call me because I didn't want to talk to his ass no goddamn way. <laughs> but, the, but, the thing about it, but the thing about it is, Jimmy, when I built that damn thing, I had fun year for years in Texas. But that time, there come a time and place for all things under the sun. There was a time to move, and I had to move to the Evergreen. And so when I, when I got up here, when I got up here, I had a... A, lo a longing for something I had been missing. That is to get on the radio and talk skip. This shit is addictive. Don't let nobody fool y'all ass. This it's in your blood. Is addictive. It's in your blood. Once you get you got to come back. 
it, you got to come back. And so I had a lot of help getting back. I did. A lot of guys saw me struggling. I didn't know where to get no shit. I stayed out of it for 12 years. And when I got back, I didn't know where to get shit no more. I had help to get where I am today. And uh, now I don't, I ain't raised no whole lot of hell, Jimmy. No, I am not the boss of Evergreen. I'm the one in Evergreen. I'm the number one shit talker on the West Coast, <laughs> bar none. I would, I would agree with that, but yeah. something just popped in my mind. Something just popped in my mind. And I, and I, and I know 413 is probably going to catch the funny shit. out of this one. And, and raising people pissed off ism to his highest level of piss activity. That's what I like doing. And then sit back and laugh at them black, them, them motherfuckers. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but crack, but crack. Let me, let me ask you something. Crack, did I, did I lose audio? Did I lose audio? No, no, you good, you good. Come on. Okay, because mine's back feeding a little bit. I apologize for that, but it is what it is. Hey, so uh, crack, I have to ask you this because I, I, I was told this and I seen a little shadow of something. Crack, they said they spotted you just before you struck the foot pedal and got back on 27025. They said, man, you was in there eating some cake and drinking wine and shit. And they said, man, they looked around and looked over their shoulder and they seen you run out the parking lot. And they said you had a great big, great big old thing, something underneath your shoulder. And you was headed to the SUV. And five days later, you were struck on the Super Bowl. <laughs> now, what, 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 what's up with that, Crack? <laughs> uh, I got home and got a phone call. And the phone call said, Crack, so where you get that, that gum bluegill? Said, what bluegill? Man, they said, Man, you got 220s up there. I said, Hey, 221. When did I get 220? I don't know about this shit. They said, I, Now, how in the hell you going to get 220s up out of your arm, Jimmy? So you know that had to be a lie. So somebody saw me. Do something. I did not pick the damn thing up and put it in my car. And it wasn't an SUV. It was, a, it was what the hell was that damn thing? I think it was a Cadillac or something. Anyway, I drove down to New Orleans. So I raised the trunk up and somebody put the damn thing over there. And then, but when I got home, I caught hell getting that bitch out, boy. Okay. I found I ain't feel as strong as I used to be. So I had to get my mama, my mama, 93 year old, to come out there and help me get that damn oh, thing out <laughs> I said, shit, mama. I said, mama, mama, mama wanted me to be happy. <laughs> so I got there and I had to ship the thing to California. I shipped the thing to Washington. $800 later, it got here. Now, if anybody, y'all, y'all want to know what it is, Jimmy? You want to know what the box is? It's right behind me. Let me see it. See it? I'm going to point it to you. See that damn thing right here? Yeah. Do that look like 220000 I've never seen a box crack. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh, oh, I'm going to show you that. Look here. Y'all see it? Yeah. That's a two pill. That's not a two pill. That's a two pill. <laughs> hey, but crack, crack. Let me, hey, let, let me ask you something. Hey, so crack. So you got, you got back out there. You got to talking on the radio. You, you're back on the radio. We all know that. You're doing an awesome job. And everything is, you know, just good and everything couldn't be no better. Right. So where do you see where do you see the bowl going in like, say, five years from today? Where do you see the bowl going? Unless and unless we change the way we think is how to build a radio station, Jimmy. Unless we start thinking that the future is already here by using components that's available right now mm -hmm. and the other ones are depleted. Yes. What I mean by they're depleted, the two that these guys, the big guys, is running right now, they no longer will be here. Unless a person change, things don't stay the same. Unless they change with the technology of today, They'd be lost in the past. They won't have nothing to use. So therefore, what would end up happening, Jimmy, is that the Super Bowl and all of the frequencies that we use, it'll die. It's just going to dry up and die. Just like the supplies that we get now is drying up and die. Unless we have an innovative attitude about how to, how to change things. 
to make things better, to utilize the power that we have better, I guarantee you, it will go down the drain. We will no longer be in the Super Bowl six operators. We will no longer have nobody to talk to. And then you be out there with a one pill or barefooted again. <laughs> and that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I've learned, or that's what I believe. Do, like you, do, you feel like, do you feel like in everything that you've seen, in your in your in your time in your career as the hobby, do you do you feel like that you have accomplished most of all your your wants and all of your goals? I mean, nobody's prom then nobody's promised tomorrow. You leave here tomorrow. What 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 would you want to be remembered as? I uh, I don't I don't look at myself like others. Jimmy, I just want to be. Happy. That's all I want to be. And all I want to do is eventually, not now, but eventually build a 100,000 watt station. I do. Not to use it, just in case I need it. <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, I just, I bit like to build that. And then when I key the damn thing and say hello, not to get out here on the damn bowl and say one 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 five 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 I'm gone. And then Jimmy have that damn thing swing about 150 dollars That's what I want to do. Now, is it necessary? No. Will I get there? Probably not. Because I found out something. The more you try to get more power that you try to get. Whatever you're looking for, evade you. If you get out there and start looking for fame, it evades you. Right. If, if you just stay away from you. Don't look for that. You got to be satisfied within your own self in order to get where you need to be. So if I get the 100000 yeah, I would use it. But I would not use it like a lot of other people. That is, I would not come out there and try to control the world. Mm -hmm. Because I realized years ago that I couldn't. I mean, it is pretty much what it is. I mean, we've covered pretty much all the bases. I mean, you know, I brought you on here. I wanted you to be a star guest, and I wanted to, I wanted I wanted everybody. I wanted the viewers to hear you for who you are, not just the man behind the microphone. Absolutely. You know? So, you know, hey, what hey, I think Craig, you, Craig, real quick question. Okay. It's got, it's got, I, I can't wait to hear the answer. You know, everybody, everybody, get out there and they have fun. But there's always in your own state, you always have like a nemesis. Like who has ever been like your nemesis that you always enjoyed tussling with on the band or or skull drag you or whatnot? Anybody in particular that you have in mind that you give respect to that that was able to to dominate your station? Uh that was able to dominate my station? Yes, sir. I ain't never had nobody dominate me. Don't, don't, really don't tell me you lost you lost condition on condition move. I don't want to hear I that. ain't never. Got my ass whooped on the Super Bowl. I don't know where to get that shit from. It's a damn Clarence got keyed on the day. Bullshit. The conditions move. <laughs> yeah, the conditions move. Yeah. That's, that's my new. That's my. I don't know where you land, bass. Just get get that get that shit from. Uh, now, Anybody here from the horse's mouth himself? That's all. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because if you if you if you've been around this game and the game we play, and y'all make up rules, right? Did y'all find out there ain't no damn rules on the Super Bowl? There ain't no damn rules. That I mean, what I'm it, always it, it, whatever you do. Now, a nemesis. I had one in Texas. His name, when I was in Texas, his name was Black Ninja. He came in the pal talk just like the guys are doing now, talking a bunch of wooey shit. Come on, what are you going to do to me? Now, the friend of mine typed, well, he didn't type, he got on the mic and said, go out there and whoop his ass. So I'd go out to the damn bowl. I ain't bragging now, y'all. <laughs> I go out there, and it just so happened I had some condition going to a guy named Double Seven in the Carolinas and Golden Numbers in the Bahamas. Swamp weed and them were all them guys. They were listening. So when the shit broke off, Golden Numbers did it first. That's where they started. So black ninja get out there talking that woo-wee shit, talking about I'm going to put me a head in a damn body bag. And so... I just keyed up and started talking crazy in hell. Golden numbers, golden numbers had to tell y'all what happened. I don't know. 
the, what what the funny part about this this part? I was I wasn't through whooping his ass. Cause the, my my friend told me to go whoop his ass. I swinged over to double seven. I was talking shit. Double seven keyed up about thirty minutes later. He said, uh, "He said I hate Clarence Carter." I said, yes, sir. I had to calm down. He said, um, "I think he didn't had enough." <laughs> I think he didn't had enough. Said, said he won't bother you no more. Double seven gone. <laughs> God, boy, that was the highlight of my career with him. I was through with that guy. Never had another problem. He never did call me out again. After double seven, told him that. Golden numbers told him, but they didn't believe him. But when double seven told him that, I think he done had. He listened. He just said, "There, just come out of nowhere." <laughs> double seven. <laughs> Got to got that. That boy had a hammer too. Plus, now the reason why he had this hammer, Jimmy, he was on the tram. <laughs> got a tram. Got, I see you got that beautiful tram cover back there in the background. And you, I, hey, let me ask you a quick question, Craig. Did you buy that cover just for this podcast, or you've been sitting on that cover <laughs> over there for a while? There was a guy, I forget his damn name. Shit, somebody might. I, I tell you, if, if Juice is in the room, he know he'll type it in there for you. Uh, shit. He lived in Redding. He built these things. Yeah, wow. and it, and it, it covered my train. Let's keep that dust out of some bitch. Look at that shit. I damn, that, that goes on my It's beautiful. But, uh, what's, what's that guy named shit? Uh, he's a real, real good friend of Prime. And he lived down in Redding. He don't even talk on the radio no more. He used to coach me. Because I was sounding like shit when I first got that big fifteen thousand. He would coach me and say, "You need to get that damn drive out of line because it's wrong damn drive with that damn thing." Um, bamboo. Is it bamboo? Yeah, bamboo. That's it. Well, bamboo. Bamboo built that. Prime just me. typed it in. Yeah, well, bamboo. Bamboo did it. Bamboo make he made that shit for me. Made me about two or three of them. I even got one for Kobe. And uh, I decided. To wear the damn thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. Uh, can y'all see me shit? There's a whole bunch of screenshots being help, being done right now. Uh damn now. No, no, look here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got that shit. <laughs> now that means from now on, y'all everybody gonna be safe. Everybody's gonna be safe. Hey, but crack, let me. All the animosity leaves you. When I got that damn towel, Jimmy, all the animosity is gone. <laughs> it's all gone. There's all gone. You know that's 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 there such go. the good thing. That's 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 the great thing about this cast, really, man. And and having you on here is because it's gonna give. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna expose not just the person behind the microphone, but it's gonna. There, people will know. People will know, and people will learn the man behind the microphone. They'll when you know after this cast, when you go back out there and you do your thing or whatever on the bowl. Now you have a different. People's gonna look at you in a different way in a better way and they'll have a more understanding and clarity to what you do and where you come from and what you've seen and what you've been through and what you've accomplished to be your age and, 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 and still doing what you do, man, a true legend to the game. Absolutely. But I got to ask you, I got to ask you one question. I got to ask you this, this, this was on my mind for a few minutes in all your way coming through this path, how many friends have you lost along this path? And has that affected you any in this? I didn't hear the question. Uh, he, he not talking. Uh, how many? How many friends have you lost because of the hobby? Look, man. If you lose a friend because of this hobby, he was your friend. friend. He wasn't your friend in the first damn play. So piss on that sucker. Let him go. Your friends is a word. People use friendship or friends. Too damn loosely. Friendship is something that's acquired over a period of time and it's tested. A friend will lay his life down for you. How many of y'all lay y'all life down for each other? Not very mm -hmm. many, y'all. That's what a friend is. So that word is used loosely. I've had one that I know that would do that. And his name was Mr. Easer out of Senior. Right. 
Mr. Either I'd have seen was my friend. Tell you something else about friends, guys. You can talk to a friend on the telephone about something personal and you'll never hear it again. That's a friend. If you start, you said something to somebody and you hear the same shit somewhere like if I get out and say, hey, Jimmy, uh, 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 I saw I saw 413 out there fucking a donkey. <laughs> and then you call, you go over there and you start talking about it to 413 or somebody else and they get back to me. Now, what the hell is that? Was that a friend? Nope, it was not. So, so Jimmy, I have I have never lost a friend except when he died. When he's a rider senior died, I lost him. Now, do I have a lot of acquaintances of people that, that I rely on? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. I have a I, I know I, I like let's put it like it. When I got ready to put my antenna, and I shouldn't even say this about him because I don't want nobody to think that that we real, real good friends. And shit like that. When I got ready to put my antenna, it's only one guy took a damn fancy ass damn machine and came up here and set the standing wave ratio on my damn antenna. And his name was Prime Minister. He came up here, parked out of my driveway. He didn't come in the house. Went right straight to the damn antenna, put his much fancy ass machine, some shit. Hell, I don't, I don't know if I can even afford it. I couldn't afford that shit. And and that damn, he said, damn, crack, you almost got it close. That's what he called me, crack. By the way, y'all, my name is Mr. Clarence C. Carter. It's not crack. That's pal talk shit. <laughs> now, and so he said, he, I put the damn beam up, and the rest is history. So, Jimmy, I appreciate you having me on your show. I don't know if I don't, my, him, is my team up? No, we good, man. We rolling, we rolling, bro. Hey. Hey, hey, crack, hey, crack! Listen, man, hey, I, man, you're up in here, bro. I mean, we just wanted to get you up in here. We wanted the people, you know, the people wanted you up in here. They wanted to hear your story, man. That's what it was all about. It's not to make me shine. It's not to make four thirteen shine. It was your hour, man. You know, and I mean, we covered a lot of grounds, and that's that's pretty much what this thing's gonna be. It's just gonna be in here, come in here, shoot the shit, kick back. We're gonna talk some. We're gonna talk some bullshit. We're gonna be real. Uh, we're going to uncover things. We're going to talk about drama. We're going to talk about whatever's going on on the Super Bowl. You know, if RC's got that hammer on your ass tomorrow morning, <laughs> hey, you might you might be a guest back here next week or next month. I don't know. And then we're going to get to the bottom of why you let RC put that ball on your ass. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it just is what it is. But I think pretty much I wanted the main thing with having you here, Crack, at your age and what you've accomplished in this game and, and, and knowing what you've known, knowing what you've uh, just all about the Super Bowl. You know, the very first question that we asked, where did the bowl come from? We covered that. Who started the bowl? We covered that. Where's the bowl currently at? We covered that. Where's the bowl going in five years? We covered that. You know, what do you what do you feel like? Did you accomplish all your stuff? We covered that. I mean, you know, and and, and we hit on pretty much all the all the hot topics that we wanted to hit on and, you know, to, to, to discover the man, not just behind the microphone, but the man for who he Absolutely. is as a person. Absolutely. Hey, hey Jimmy, real quick. If you, do you, I don't know if you have the scroll with the comments and stuff. If uh, anybody want to ask a question, you, you open to answer any questions. If anybody got, we're going to pull some good questions. I don't want to, just get any questions. So Jimmy, I don't know if you have the scroll in front of you. I can pull it. I can pull it up. I had it turned off. I had it turned off because I wanted to focus pretty much on what crack was talking about. And I wanted to be able to keep up with him because, you know, uh, me and crack are both long winded and you got two long winded, uh, uh, uh cotton choppers running at the same <laughs> speed. Man. It's not, you're about to have a damn head on collision somewhere. So I got to pull that back up and we can get in here. And we can start talking about the people. And if the people, like you said, they have anything that they want to catch crack on the way out the door, I got no problem with any of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I know I'm pretty sure that somebody in there want to ask crack something, you know, and we're going to pull a, a couple of good relevant questions. <clears throat> and a lot of people, you know, that, that are watching finally get to put the face with the voice. Finally see the guy that be putting that mall out there yelling and screaming and carrying on and got game up back, you know. <clears throat> now they get to see the face. You know, I've seen you, I've, I've met you plenty of times. I know you when I was a young one, you know what I mean? And 
And uh, man, back in the day when you was in Texas, um, and I lived down in the South Side of Daytona, I was in the Mobile that time. I mean, I got some stories with you. I'd just sit there and listen, and you would hold it down, man, for hours and hours. And I'd be like, man, when's that, when's that guy gonna, gonna be quiet already? I mean, he's just hijacking the damn band already. And I remember one time I was fighting with an old body man out of Tampa, Florida, in the Mobile. Oh, he was, uh, he passed away, you know, uh, God bless him. But uh, you said, uh, oh, there's some two badass mobiles right now. Let's let's get it on. So we we started keying to you, and at the time he ran out of gas because he called me. But that's a different story. So I kind of whooped him going to you. And he said, 413. Let me ask you a question, man. That damn base station, that 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 mobile sound like a base station. What kind of antennas are you running? And at the time, I was running some BB. Oh, I was running, I was running some BB. BB used to be a DC Sky champ down here. For for guys that don't know that, he used to run a, go to the breaks and run DC Sky and stuff. So he used to build antennas. And uh, I was like, man, I was all excited. I said, man, I'm running these BB antennas, and, and they smoking right. He said, man, let me tell you something. And I'll just sit there with my mouth wide open. He goes, those BB antennas ain't nothing but 55 antennas with BB stickers on them. <laughs> so, I was like, where the heck did he get all this stuff? So at the time, BB was reading the mail, right? <clears throat> so the next day, he come out there and crack. Tell I, I know you remember that story because he come out there cussing at you. He called me out. He called, started calling me a faggot, <laughs> and he he called me a faggot three times. <laughs> I don't know if I can say. Can I? I don't know if I can say what I said. It's already too late, crack. Keep going. This is you, crack. <laughs> If any damn children in the room, please leave. If any preachers in there, y'all need to leave because I told him don't bring this shit up then. But Jimmy, so he was sitting there and he, I don't know, he was listening to me talk. I was talking about triple trade, you and triple trade. Yep. I talked to him and he, he just keyed up. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of your faggot ass. <laughs> I said, God damn, you know, out of nowhere. I'm sitting there. Well, I ignored him, right? He did it again. I ignored him. He did it again. I said, damn, enough of this shit. I said, baby, the only way you would know I was a faggot. I said, first of all, I'm six foot five, 245 pounds, 95% dick. And the only way you would know I was a faggot, you had 95% of my <laughs> dick down your throat. Boy, man, when I said that, that son of a bitch went crazy. God, boy, I can't cuss that. So he cussed me out for about four hours, y'all. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I ain't sitting in the wrong. <laughs> but I remember that was that was one of my favorite memories, man. It was, it was just so funny. It was a little vulgar, but yeah, yeah but it was it was funny. Listen, I, I'm sorry, man. No, no, I, I didn't don't mean to apologize. No, you hey, you, be, you, you know, don't have not, nothing to apologize. That, that it is. But the funny thing is, I met you, I believe, in Charleston, South Carolina. I got into the elevator. And you was in there, and you just looked at me. You looked at me up and down, head to toe. And I had a 413. I said, who is you? <laughs> I said, I, I'm 413 out of Florida. He said, I'm Clarence C. Carter. So you that shit talker. You the one that always started that problem with being BB. I froze. I was in the corner. <laughs> elevator like this. Like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> but you was cool, man. And ever since that day that I met you, you've been cool with me, man. And uh, got nothing but respect for you, man. You're, you're a 10-8 operator. You know what I'm saying? You bring a lot to the game, and we just appreciate it. I'm just glad to bring you on the show and show the real true side of you. Right, right. I totally agree. No no problem. But the the end of that story came when uh, the uh, a lady named Foxy. Y'all ever heard of Foxy? Miss Foxy. Foxy. Yeah. Miss Foxy uh, out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. I think that's where she's from. She called B.B. on the phone and said, B.B., if I were you, see, I've been listening to this guy a long time. You just got on the bowl last week. You was a shootout, man. If I were you, I would leave that guy alone and say he won't quit. <laughs> what? Because what he didn't realize was I was one of these kind of guys that love to piss people off. <laughs> I love to, man, on the radio, yes. But in person, I don't. I, I, I think that a lot of people get – Pal Talk, what we're doing today, CB Radio, and the in-person person, they, get, they think they're all the same. They're not. We take the stage and we're like actors. When we, when we get off that damn stage, we can be different. We're fathers. 
Jack Emmer, we're daddy, grandpa. And then some of us, Jack Emmer, we don't know what the hell we are. Like me, I'm a bastard. So but I'm proud of the fact. <laughs> and there's wrong that I found out the hell we can be successful too one of these damn days if we have the support of our family. <laughs> I will see you then. Now you got. Hey, Craig. I'm gonna be honest with you, Craig. I'm just sitting here, man, and I'm watching you, and I'm processing all this, man. And I'm like, man, the crack is really back. The crack. This ain't crack and pow talk. You know, a lot of guys know crack and pow talk. But now these guys are going to, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of guys, a lot of different people that's viewing this and where this is streaming. And it's, it's actually streaming on a TV show too. Um, so, I mean, it's just, we're oh, feeding yeah. it in here, whatever. But so, Hey, it's going to be, it's going to be everywhere, but crack, listen, man, you are a lot to take in. <laughs> if, 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 if people, if people don't know you for who you are, you do. I mean, you, you can give people the wrong vibes but that's why I, I really wanted to get you on this show. I wanted you to be a part of it. And I was super, super happy when you agreed to come on the show. And and I told you, I said, listen, I'm not going to censor you. I'm not, I'm not going to micromanage you. You just be you, bro, because it's going to give all these viewers and it's going to give the guys on the bowl. It's going to give, and, and you know, I, I get so tired of hearing that. This is going to be a platform of CB. You understand? Just CB, United Kingdom CB. 28 CB, 22, 26 back in the day, 14, 12. Even if the Spanish guys, if, if, if they're able to understand what's going on, then I want them to be a part of this too. So, I mean, everybody hears you, Crack. I mean, you are talking just like that. Everybody hears you. And now they're going to know who you are. And just like you, got more guests that's, that's already scheduled to come on the show and and this is this is a good thing. I think this is a really good thing, and I think it's gonna it's gonna be an eye opener, you know. So, like I say, I just wanted to take the time to personally thank you for everybody, you know, for being a part of this and, and helping us build this. But we ain't done yet. You get your list there to see. If we get some questions going for Craig real quick before we before we cut them loose. Take 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 off with that thing. Say, huh? Hey, hey, y'all, y'all post your questions to Craig. Some serious questions now. I know you guys. We Bye. always get up and everything, but uh. I'm going to give it a few seconds to start scrolling and see what questions they got, and I'm going to pull them out. And we're going to just rapid fire ask you quick, quick questions, uh, Craig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see what comes up. By, by the way, Jimmy, I never would have even come on your show if you'd have made it If you'd have made it so that it was just for certain people. If everybody wasn't included. I'm talking about all the channels. Because these guys going to grow up, they're going to come to the boat. If, and I want them right when they come. If it was yes. like that, I wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't. Because if we don't start grooming people right now, hell, when I, I'm, a, I'm not, may, I may not be around here much longer. You won't either. Then what's going to happen? Let our, our hobby going to die, man. And I want yeah. I got, I got, I got a lot invested in the Super Bowl. And a, a lot of y'all do too. And I, I got, a couple, I got a couple quick questions right here that popped up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe that's double seven. He said, Cracked always says, charge it to my head and not to his heart. And he said, you got a big old heart. That's a comment that he made. Um, uh, Donald Fulcher said, what's an ear plugger, in your opinion? What's an ear plugger? An ear plugger is a guy on the local scene. All they do is get behind you and just plug in. You got here trying to talk skip. That's an ear plugger. He plug in there when you want to talk skip. Another ear plugger is somebody... I'm going to give you a good example of earplug. This guy lives in Jamaica, and I hope he's in the room to hear me today. Here we go. I ain't looking at you. I ain't looking at you. One, one, four, seven. I call him one in the apple tree. I remember when he was in uh, Long Island. Yeah, yeah. And then he had to, he had to go back uh, uh, to wherever he came from <laughs> for various reasons. But those are earplugs. They plug folk ears. Now, I'm going to tell you, that happens. That particular things happen when you got a beam that's about, oh, 15 foot long and four or five elements on it, and you don't have some bitch on the damn island got an amplifier. That kind of, you plug everybody's ears, and nobody can talk to him as an earplug. That's a good, that's a good answer. That's a guess. Crack, what motivates you? to enjoy your radio daily. That's coming from uh, Tony Montana up in New Jersey. Um, 
the challenge of trying to find somebody out there new that's got game that you can sit up and actually talk to them about something for a while and then let them go. And then they become important sea beers. That's what it is. Uh, so Tony, one of your days, you're going to be an important sea beer. You know, you me, know what's required, right? Let me grab you right there, Craig, because this guy, James, James Smith, he, he asked me, he said, Jimmy, ask my question. What is an important sea beer? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what I was getting to. So, Jane, an important sea beer is a person that can key down one time and get your attention. They can actually talk about something. It doesn't matter what it is. And then they're able to say bye without somebody dropping a ham on your ass. And then they, they, you never heard again. You made the important sea beer list. Now, guess what, guys? It was a guy named BT actually did it. He, he was barefooted. And he made the damn list. A lot of folk with a lot more power never made that damn list. They kill one time, next year you never hear him again. <laughs> Frank, let me jump in here real quick. Just, that's, just, that's just black right here. Yeah, like you want, black go, you want me to go, Vinny, or you you gonna go? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, this guy, Jarn and Wilson, Jarn and Wilson. I apologize if I'm not saying that right. I live all the way out in the woods now. I'm away. I'm away from a school or a college. Hey, Clarence, I got a question. Will you be in New Orleans this April? And is Big Boss really a booger face bastard? <laughs> uh, Big Boss is a booger face, no good tractor face bastard. You damn right he is. <laughs> you damn right. But you're not gonna say that to his face because that son of a bitch care a two part pearl handle magnum fofo, and he don't mind unloading now what I'm in your ass. He'll bust a cap. He promised to do me like that, Jimmy. But you know what I told him? I said, Big Boss, I eat bullets and shit razor blades. If I don't give a damn about my ass, why in the hell should I give a damn about my <laughs> That's the crap right there. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm not going to New Orleans. I'm going to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jack, hey, Jack Duffy, real quick, Craig. Jack Duffy, he wants to know if you can turn around and show all the boys the, the, the dozy meter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Let me show hell. Look here, guys. Y'all talk about them damn birds, right? <laughs> if y'all smart enough, just tell me the difference between a bird what and a dozy what. I want to hear it one of these days, not today. Because I'm gonna show you my meter. Look at this shit. Now that there, right it is. There, <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. There it is. Put it right there. <laughs> now, 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 that's the that's the that's the expensive version. Now, Jimmy, let me show you another. Now this one right here. Long years ago, guys, I had a. Oh, I don't know if you see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's a little two thousand, right? Now, I don't know what the hell it is. All I can tell you is, when I first got my 15000 I had this some bitch in land. Oh, my God. I did, man. Hell. It probably I, still smells like smoke right now. I would go check. <laughs> hey, hey, crack. Hey, crack, real quick. We got hey, to tighten up here. Hey, crack. Get blown up. Don't worry. <laughs> Boom. Goddamn smoke out that bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, crack, real quick. 73, 73 in the Bahama Islands. He wants to know. He said, uh, uh, I got to find it here. Hold on. How do we pass this on, Crack? How do we pass this on? If you had to, That's a good you had question. to answer that, no, and it, how's this passed on? How do you pass on what, Jimmy? What we're doing? I, I would take it that away. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, what we're doing on the boat. How do you pass it on? I don't know. I don't know how you're going to pass it on. Things like what you guys are doing now can actually evolve into actually something else. Where you can actually teach people the right way of doing things and teach them what to do. Teach these kids. Don't be going out buying no 20000 Go find them some MOSFETs or something. Something's going to be around a while. And then let, them, let somebody build a damn thing for you. That'll work. Evolve with the times. Exactly. Teach yeah. the kid, they evolve with the time. Now they got something they can work with. Don't teach these kids 73 that they can go out and get a 20,000 next week because they may not be available. 
teach them to start now, looking in the future, building their antenna systems up and stuff like that. But you can never teach anybody anything who's not willing to learn. Learn. Mm. You can't. That's some, words right there. That's some knowledge right there, man. Yeah. I got to get him. Yeah. Shit, I'm proud. I'm proud of this motherfucker right here. Right? <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Craig, does it still smell like smoke, though? <laughs> God, this. Y'all don't know what what smell like. <laughs> I smell what. <laughs> it's still coming out of there. I did something with about 12,000 what. It went boom. I said, what the shit? <laughs> I, did a, I, did, I did another one like that, too. Drake. I blowed up a Drake doing it. It had 2,000 watts on the scale. Mm. It did. And I said, I dialed my damn amplifier down. I thought I had a thousand watts. I said, yeah, that's right there, a thousand. I fired that damn thing and I said, I didn't know that when you say something, the goddamn thing, it goes on past that somewhere. By maybe, about maybe 10, 12, I don't know what the hell it would do. Burnt that bitch up too. So I burnt hey, up two. Hey, Prime said those are Chesterfield watts. <laughs> yes. hey, 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 crack, would you agree with this? Prime, Prime, Prime typed in there. He said, I know how. We have to learn to be more inclusive as opposed to exclusive. Mm. Exactly. We Some need to be it. more inclusive. We need to be learned. We need to help people learn what we do as opposed to criticizing them to the point where we start excluding them. If you start excluding people, your, 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 your game or your your craft does not grow. If you got a bunch of guys that's in an electrical engineering school and you kick everybody out but one person, it only grows by one. So you teach a bunch of them and then spread them out. And now your craft or whatever, you, it learns from that. So that's what you, 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 we've got to start bringing people in and then teach them. If they're doing something wrong, do them just like you do your children. Beat their ass. Mm. It's just that simple. You, 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 if they, if you teach them and they don't learn, whoop their ass until they learn. And Ray, Ray Johnson, do. Ray Johnson over here. He says, "Ask Clarence Carter if I make it to Washington, will he meet me on the cut?" What the hell's a cut? <laughs> <laughs> Did he say on a cut? Maybe, maybe he's got trigger. Maybe he's Roy Rogers and he's gonna ride trigger. <laughs> I don't trigger. know, crack. Uh, Trigger's dead. If he dig up that son of a bitch, boy, he can have him have it for himself. But Trigger's dead. Now, if he, <laughs> if he comes to Washington, uh, will I meet him somewhere? Probably. Because I don't, uh, more than likely, the only reason why he want to do that is because he want to meet me. I hope he ain't coming to kill me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my wife is hoping that shit. I, I don't live so damn long. Now, hell, if I die tomorrow, <laughs> shit, I, I'd have had a good life. I hope it's not a little bit longer, but right, I, 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 but I ain't going to meet him in no goddamn cunt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, hey I w, w from Puerto Rico waving at you. We got guys hey. from Puerto Rico listening. So what is in here? W, W, W from Puerto Rico. I be damn, that famous bastard in here. He in here and he waved a hand. He said, good job to you. He's enjoying the show. Um. Thank you, W, for showing up. I've always admired that guy. He got a hell of a damn hammer. God yes, damn. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he yes, does. He does. And, uh, and he's cool with it. So yes, sir. That's called being inclusive. See what I'm saying? That's what made him come to the Super Bowl. Because oh, yeah. He, he, yeah, you know, I know. Well, I started out. I started out in uh before I came to the Super Bowl, I used to be down in a channel called 26715, which uh, is considered the Puerto Rican Super Bowl. And there's a lot of guys that come down from here. Uh, Bad Eye to come from over there. Um, w, Blue Boy. There's a lot of guys that kind of coming on because they enjoy the talk game on the bowl. And it's fun because over there it's kind of a little bit, that's another show, but they are enjoying coming to this culture of Channel 6 also. So that's good, like that you say, being inclusive because we got the guys from Puerto Rico. We got guys from Australia. Lately I've been hearing a lot of guys uh, uh, from Europe coming in, and and they're just down with the Super Bowl as anybody else, and and I, I'm glad that you know uh, 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 Jimmy's including them also because you know they got their own thing going on over there. They they talk 
on Channel 6 over there also. So it's pretty cool. Tell them bring it up. Yes, sir. Because yeah, I remember hey, when, I remember when Golden Numbers, I couldn't understand a goddamn thing he said. If I had told him that every day, I, I kept trying to listen till I understood. <laughs> now I understand. Guess what? None of them got all of them guys that speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> They've been around long enough, they better. <laughs> Golden Numbers been around a long time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So what's up, Jenny? What are we gonna do? We're gonna wrap this up or what? I mean, I'm glad to have uh I got I got two hot questions here. Okay, one guy okay. One okay. guy's texting in and he wants he's like, ask crack who has the best water. Who the has the water. best water? The best water. <laughs> God, that's dang. what I was asking. I guess he's <laughs> wanting to know who's the best in the water. Oh no. I, I don't know either. Cause who that that, that shit that Jimmy's uh, that uh, 413 drink, I ain't gonna drink it, I'll drink arrowhead. <laughs> this one's, this I ain't one's, drinking this that one's shit a, that them damn maggots was in. This one, this one, this this one here, okay. crack. I think this is a real good one right here. Uh <laughs> Mike Ballinger. Mike Ballinger asked this question to you, crack. He says, ask crack who he looked up to in the hobby. That's a good one there. First person that I looked up to. He did now. Was carpet bagger mm. back in Ohio. He named him carpet bagger, and there was another guy. Believe it or not, it was a guy named Deputy Dog, and he lived in Moline, Illinois. I looked up to him. Tell you the reason why I looked up to both of these guys. Not only were they ten eight on the Super Bowl. When you saw them in person, they're some of the nicest people you ever want to meet. Willing to help you any way they could. That's how I looked up there. Carpet bag, I never met, I never seen him meet a stranger. He was a nice guy. I'm telling you, and it was a but those are the two that I looked up to the most. Him, David the Dog, and Carpet Bag. Growing up. That's a great answer. How about I think Luke Miller's up and he said, Who was Crack's first mentor? That's a question he asked. Who was your first mentor, Crack? Me. I, good. I mean, I don't, um, a mentor means somebody need to be with you all the time, teaching all facets of everything. I never had that. I, mine was uh, at school when I, when I was learning how to solve problems. And so that would be my teachers. They would be my mentors. But in the radio hub, I didn't have any. I had to learn everything that I know. I had learned everything I know from what I learned in school and apply it to the radio. That's why I learned it. Now, have I had somebody help me? Yeah, in other other ways, yeah. You know, um, as far as right now, shit, the only somebody probably can teach me any damn thing is Prime Minister because he's the only somebody I listen to. Because the rest of these lying bass a lot of chain in <laughs> it. So, so I ain't going to listen to that lying ass. Pram ain't going to lie to me about no damn radio shit. Not Painkiller pain killer in the Carolinas is oh, asking. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says, ask Crack, who – What? Is, where was this piece of – who wants to take over the bowl? But we covered that kind of. We went in there. That's a very deep conversation. Okay. Way. I'll touch it. Y'all ready? Oh, my God. D-Rail, 955, and Motor Mouth Mall. Uh, and oh yeah, Budweiser when he when he get get out of hospital, Budweiser. These guys got some of the biggest damn amplifier you ever had. Now, Jimmy Swagger went down in Florida and built a great big ass station over a guy house named Four Thirteen. Now he's supposed to be taking over the damn bowl, so he's involved in it too. Man, I'll follow that. <laughs> <laughs> but. Those guys came now in their defense. Nine five five. He told me. He said, "I like the competition on the Super Bowl." That's why I'm down here. So I'm going to build a station so I can be the boss of the Bighorn. You know what I told him? I said, "Unless you learn how to read conditions, you're wasting your damn time and money." That's what I told him. But if they want to aspire to be great, let them go. Let them try. 
but they, they their, their idea of taking over, rather than being inclusive, they're being exclusive. Are you following what I'm saying? Hmm. When you want to stop everybody else from talking, and that's your main objective, you're fucking up. That wouldn't ride a hobby go like that. Yeah. Go down, man, to go to shit. When you have bad intentions. When you have wow. bad intentions. Bad intentions are no good for any sport. Hmm. If you're playing football, to give you an example, and your intention was to go out there and break the damn quarterback neck, and you do it. Was that good for the game? That'd be why you got a flag. So any anything that you do, you need to have some type of a limit as to what you want to do or what you can get away with. Oh, that's great. fair enough. That's, that's fair great. Enough. Appreciate that answer. Somebody said, uh, man, I, I scrolled down and didn't get his name. He said, but in your opinion, right now at this very moment, who's the most 10-8 station that you think is currently on the bowl, coming from anywhere? That I've heard. That you've heard, in your opinion, who you think is the most 10-8 right now? <laughs> oh, shit. It don't got to be one particular. You could name two or three or whatever, you know, the top guys that you think. Or 10 8. There's a lot of guys out there, man. Uh, you got, and I'll start out with these guys. They're 10 8. Their intention is wrong, but they, um, they're 10 8. I'll start out with 955. It's 10 8. Big Boss is definitely 10 8. You got Mean Peer will always be 10 8. I don't give a shit if they whoop his ass every day. He always, in my mind, gonna be the man in the Great Lake. It's a lot Let me of stop you right there. No, Let me stop you right there for a minute. Yeah, let's right? get, oh, shit. yeah, yeah. Let's get into that. Yeah, we, me and Jimmy me, had a several conversations of that. Okay. Let me go ahead. Go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vinny. You go ahead because hey, yeah. he hit something right there, and I want to talk about that. Me, me and Jimmy ahead. had several conversations of it. I know, Mr. Meat Pill Ten Eight. He been Ten Eight since probably yeah. before I was born. Whenever right? he get ready, that's right. All right. And, now, now what about now? There's some stations out there that give him fits. And, and kind of key on him now. I mean, because it's evolving. Right. So, and you know, as you, he's still te- the man up there in the lakes, even though he's get, starting to get dominated. That's right. You, he's still in my, in my mind. Now, whether or not he get keyed on, I haven't heard it. Y'all may have heard it, but I haven't. Can they hold him down? No. If he, if Mean Peel uses his knowledge and skills, the guys in the Great Lakes are going con- to continue to catch hell. They got a guy in the sand pile named Swamp Weed. They got a guy in the Carolinas. I call him Mr. Carolinas ever, ever since I first heard his name. It ain't Painkiller. Painkiller come out there, damn it, when there ain't no skill. They got people like that on the band. They got a guy live up here with me. I could build a damn station. That guy was so damn big, it'd be a shame. And he would still be the boss of the Evergreen. Y'all know who that is, Prime Minister. The rest of you can't make it don't count for you. Cause guess what? Cause he can be on whatever he needs, whether or not it's a big ass antenna or whatever. He can do whatever you want to. So you don't jack with nobody like that. Just like you don't jack with his daddy. <laughs> he'll fix it where you get your ass off of your daddy. And that's just the way he is. But there's a lot of gas. 766 is super teenage. The problem with him is he's scared. And I hope he listening. He's scared that somebody gonna whoop his ass. The bowl, the bowl is got me in West Coast right now is six to three. They can say what the hell they want to about that zombie. He is bold. They got guys in Idaho that's bad. There's a guy over there named BBI and number one son. They bad. They live about 500 miles from us, so we don't never I don't never hear their comebacks much, but mm-hmm. I do hear them. So I've named a bunch of there's one guy. That it doesn't matter this whole year who I'm talking to can take my radios. One guy can do that. And that's 25 in the corner. Mm. He's the damnedest son of a bitch I ever seen in my <laughs> life. And he's a shit talking. I didn't, hey, by the way, Javini, I'm gonna lip, I'm gonna whisper. Hey, hey Jimmy, I didn't know he was white. <laughs> I did not know 25 were white guys. He got some good game. Yeah, he talks yeah. good stuff. I don't know where that something learned this shit. You ain't got <laughs> that song. Uh, he is bad, boy. Anyway, uh, next question. 
Got anything else, Jim? Hey, I, I, wait, we've covered we've covered pretty much everything. We're a little over time right here, you know, so we sure don't want. Oh, I'm to... sorry. No. Oh, hey, hey, we, we, we're good, man. We're good. We, we've covered all the bases, you know. Like I said earlier, three different ways, three different times. So you know, we got to go through the questions for all the people in the on the on the on the question asking stuff. So I mean, you know, hey, we just did what we wanted to do. We come here, we got you in here, we got to know you a little bit better, man. And look forward to having you back on the show. Absolutely. Uh, hope all oh. is well. Like you smoke, you, you're getting ready to smoke over there. Class. Chesterfield's ready. Let me see that Chesterfield. Let me see what you got going on over there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I had to, they put filters on it for me. They? I had to them out of Mexico. They stopped making them in the Carolinas. So I, had, I imported them. Shit. You know what I mean? I got some Mexican friends that get my shit. You got, you, you got some yeah. connects. You got yeah. some connects. <laughs> His name is Juice. Juice got some friends and they bring that shit over on the backpack. <laughs> when you come, when, hey, crack, when you come back, see if Juice will get you a 12 pack of Corona or Modelo and you, oh, hell you pass no. them around. Because if I get it from Juice, he'll leave out a pee in him and recapped it. <laughs> hey, no, hang here on. No juice. No, no. Well, real quick, when 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 we, hey, you know, here probably next week, I hope to have the phone lines to where these guys, you know, they can call in. That's that's when it can, it, it's going to get a little bit more interesting. You know, we'll have guests on the show. Uh, that's the game plan is to have a star guest every Saturday, uh, uh, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll have it set up to where, you know, the callers can call in. That way, if the star says something, that intrigue somebody or you know we can just uh rebuttal that right then and there dead on the spot and get straight to the nitty-gritty and hash that bullshit out there so but once again appreciate everybody for supporting. appreciate everybody oh real quick i didn't name if everybody I didn't i'm gonna get pissed they're gonna get pissed off of me uh by saying not saying like Ebony King and King Snake and that group of guys there's a bunch of guys out there Kenny they know who they are yeah yeah, yeah. And I if, hope if, it, crack, if, if anybody I, feels I any, name, I'm sorry. Crack, if anybody I feels any name. type of way or get mad over anything, man, just it's just this is just a radio hobby. This is just what we do, man. But you want to give them guys a shout out, I shoot them. I just give them and and, and, and there's a bunch of 10 people, five four nine is one of them, switchblade, a lot of guys, man, it's bad and they're super 10 eight. Rifle man, Tennessee, that damn T bird is crazy. Now, somebody needs to take this program and then they need to give it to his ass and tell him Clarence Carter was in there all night long and only cussed two times. <laughs> you know, there was a bit over under how many times you were going to say the F word, right? You know, there was, yeah. side <laughs> there was a side There was a sad bit how many times I going to say it. Oh, yeah, what, what's what we said? He said, motherfucker. And <laughs> He said, I, I say it like white folks. He said, I'm politically correct. I, I talk like what? I need to go to the ghetto and learn. I said, and, 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 and you kept the grand, you kept the grand lizard hat sitting on the on the floor behind you. Hey, yeah. hey but listen. Don't hey, worry listen. about it, guys. I got your back. I got your back. <laughs> I got your back. I am. I am oh, yeah. you. I live in Marysville, Washington, home <laughs> of the Grand Wizard. Well, when they saw that bastard, I had more pull than he did. So they <laughs> made me the Grand Dragon. That's the right order. So now, yeah, all you black folk can be included with the white folks. And guess what? We're going to solve the problems of the United States. <laughs> Hey, but they crack. You know what? I want to touch on something. There's problems. And you know, everybody bitches about the problems that's on the bowl, but there's problems on 28. There's problems on six. There's problems on 11. There's problems everywhere you go. And people just make problems. So, you know, it just we we work, we practice to do better as humans. And that's just how we get through things. It's, it's called life, bro. L-I-F-E. Yeah. Uh, there's always going to be, you can't please everybody coming into this, you know. You know, me and 413, we just talked about it. We're not going to be able to make everybody happy. There's going to be haters. They're going to be, there's going to be thieves among us. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's what it is. But one thing about this that's going to separate it and make it different from what other people try to copy and jock and all that, you said it yourself, crack. This, the gift of gab, you can't read no book. You can't, you can't be taught this. 
You hey, just, hey, you're Frank, born with it. You can't puff and sniff it. You got to be born with it. <laughs> right. If you Frank, can't man. puff it, if you can't puff it or do what? You got to be born with it. If you can't puff it or sniff it, you got to be born with it. That's where it works. That's right. That's right. And I'm going to leave you on this note right here because I heard this shit on 27025 the other day. Everybody wants to be a boss until what? It's time to. Until it's time to do boss shit. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Crack, I'm going to wrap it up right there on that end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a shout out to the United Kingdom guys for coming uh super super uh super stoked about having all them guys up in here and being a part of this spanish guys uh being up in here from the spanish channel uh 26715 i want to thank each and everybody from the top of this room to the bottom of this room all my homeboys down Absolutely. there in the islands uh shout out to one peel and barbados much love to you and the wife man and look forward to bumping it down with you coming real soon all the boys in the bahamas Golden numbers, sorry you couldn't make it, but maybe you'll catch the uh, the after show. Not last, but uh, not least, but last, Prime Minister. I appreciate all the support, appreciate all the help, and I appreciate you sticking around and to uh, making time to make the whole show. Yeah, uh, don't forget uh, to don't forget to tune in every Saturday eight o'clock. We're gonna have different guests. Uh, we ain't gonna announce it no more. We're just gonna have them on. Keep y'all keep y'all guessing who we're gonna have on, but don't forget to join us on YouTube. The bigger the, the big hammer show on YouTube. Um, we're also on Blackjack TV. If you guys download the app, Blackjack TV, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a free channel, it's free TV, and we're going to be on there. We're actually on there right now, live on Blackjack TV. And also uh, in the Super Bowl six Skip Talkers, if you got to guys get a chance and uh, get a little couple minutes out of your time, that I, I posted a lot of pictures from past breaks, you know, John Deere. There's a whole bunch of CBs that you could put a face to the to the voice. So check that out, and uh, glad you guys came in. Glad you guys joined us. Had a great time. Uh, this is an awesome inception, awesome first show. Uh, Jimmy, anything else before we go? Yes. If, if you really, truly enjoyed the room, it'd be really, really helpful if everybody would just take five seconds out of a busy day and click all the likes and make sure you guys share this. And we put a lot of time into this to make sure that it's good entertainment and solid entertainment for you guys at home and to give you guys something different. So make sure you guys hit the share button, hit the like button, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you guys over on YouTube. Uh, and that's where we'll be. Be You know, that, that's that's exactly where our goal is to, to be. Our YouTube page is already up. So by next Saturday, I hope to be streaming this on YouTube. And there was one more thing that I was missing. Boom, 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 boom. Make sure you hit the shares. Make sure you hit the likes. And I appreciate all y'all support. And we'll catch y'all next time. Oh, my mind. I got to put my mind uh, uh, blank. It came back to me. Uh, well, he played the music and I lost it again. So God bless y'all. I'm going to squeaker down here. Just trying. My little station down here.